Okay, we are always delighted when Ava Valardinger broke can uh, join us as uh, uh, she's about to now because today uh, is the big day that Elon Musk has bought Twitter. He doesn't own the company yet, but he uh, well he does actually. He's taken he, he's uh, taken control of it. He doesn't own it all. He wants to take it private, and he says, "I hope that even my worst critics remain on Twitter because that's what free speech means." And uh, uh, there's talk that he'll be permitting Donald J. Trump to uh, resume his Twitter account. As I said, Ava joins us from the Netherlands. It's great to see you uh, from your fabulous country, Ava. Do you think this is good news for free speech? Hi, Mark. Well, it's always wonderful to be on. Um, Mm -hmm. Honestly, I Mm -hmm. don't want to rain on this parade, but I have... I think it's a little early to be cheering, first of all, because of, well, apparently both your governments, but also the EU crackdown on freedom of speech. That's one that I'm very worried about. And also, Mm. Elon Musk, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of his. I think he has a lot of weird, very fringe, very dangerous projects up his sleeve, like Neuralink, for example. But also with Twitter now. he vowed to authenticate all humans. So that would mean taking away those bots that you were just talking about. And even though I think that sounds like a great idea, of course, um, authenticating all humans would also mean that you would have to log into um, these platforms with, again, a digital identity that would make sure that you actually exist as a person. And I see all sorts of dangerous um tendencies there that would work right into the hands of the European Digital Identity Project that we've talked about before. Well, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because it really ties together the two things we've been talking about, uh, which is basically the mandated COVID vaccine booster shot or or the booster for the booster shot for the booster shots, booster shot or whatever we're up to for now. And and the Elon Musk Twitter thing, because basically, as we were sort of talking about earlier in a statistical sense, Uh, My sense is that actually these vaccines wouldn't have made much difference to the health outcomes anyway. But what they do make a difference to is that as uh, the head of the EU, the president of the EU, uh, whatever her name is, uh, Cruella von der Leyen, that's how I think the the head of uh, (laughs) the uh, European Union uh, president, um, she's fully on board with using COVID passports as the pretext for digital identity. Has that train left the station and is it too late to stop it? Well, uh, they just passed another law in the European Parliament that's called the Digital Mm. Service Act, which is part, again, of this digital project, the digital identity project that also the COVID pass Mm. was a part of. So you're completely right there. Mm. Um, This is something that is going to control, as Ursula von der Leyen has said, every aspect of our lives. So, uh, yes, this Mm. new DSA, this, this Digital Service Act, for example, is one where the EU or the government, the moment that there is a crisis, oh, we've heard that word before, is able Mm. to intervene on social media platforms like Twitter, regardless of whether Elon Musk owns his or not, and say, hey, there is a crisis Mm. here, take it COVID, take it the war with Ukraine, uh, maybe even the climate crisis that they've convinced everyone and their mother to believe in, and then say there is, we Mm. need a narrative that is solid, that can't be questioned because we need to fight this crisis right now. And that is the end of free speech. So, I mean, it all goes hand in hand, it all works together. And I am very worried that we are not really going to be able to stop this unless we might all decide that we're not going to use these apps anymore. And good luck with that. Well, what's the difference between because when the Chinese started their social credit scores and all the rest of it, uh, and we all went, oh, my word, good thing we're not like China. Uh, We seem to be getting very much like China in terms of controlling the narrative, as you put it. Oh, absolutely. I don't know if you've seen this or if your viewers have, but in Bologna and in, in Rome, in Italy, and also in, in mm. Bayern, in, in, um, in Germany, they're going to start now with what they call a smart citizen wallet. 
which is basically a social credit system. <laughs> but just like you would expect in the mm -hmm. West, they are, you know, they are going to cover it up a little bit for us and they're going to make it sound like it's mm -hmm. a wonderful thing that you can do to uh, do good for society. And so what they're going to do now mm -hmm. is reward citizens. That's the word that they use to behave in a virtuous manner and just you know coincidentally the virtuous manner of behavior is in line with the sustainable sustainability development goals that the un has laid out for us for the 2030 agenda so hmm. if you take public transport instead of your car you're going to be rewarded points and it's all lovely and it's all voluntary until it's not hmm. Hmm. And, and of course, they again, as we were talking about earlier, they could do that with, you know, the fourth, fifth, sixth booster shot. If you get the sixth booster shot, then with this uh, Italian so-called passport, uh, you might get 10 free bus trips or 10 free train rides or whatever. So in a sense, the state is taking an ever an, e an ever heavier handed approach uh, to how it permits us to live our lives. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And this is, I mean, we've seen that it works with COVID because they'll they'll bring to you a perfectly uh, good sounding pretext like public health. They will uh, talk to you in a way where you feel morally obliged to comply because if you don't do it, you're killing grandma and nobody wants to kill grandma. Well, they can do that, mm. of course, with the climate. You know, you want to save the world, right? So you have to eat less meat. You have to mm. take less planes. And if the, the, if the technology is there and the technology is there, then the only thing that stops us from believing that this will happen to us is our naivety. And, but it's going to happen. Yeah. It's almost like a, a fact of, of nature, yeah. of law. Like it's a law of nature that if the technology is there and the people in power have the option to abuse it, they will do it. Well, I, I find this all very disturbing, and you've been on top of this story long before most people were. I think about things like, well, you know, the American Revolution or any other kind of revolution, whether that would be even possible. Would the American Revolution be possible if George III had all the American colonists' digital uh, identity details at Buckingham Palace? I don't think so. I think this has huge implications for how we conduct ourselves in the most basic way. Thank you very much for that, Ava. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again, because, as I said, you've been uh, following this stuff since way before most of us were. Uh, let me. And this is something you should be talking about. You've seen in the last two years how quickly things can change.